Do you know what is DCAP and why it is necessary in VLSI? Do you know about on-chip and off-chip DCAPs in VLSI? Do you know the basic construction of CMOS DCAPs? Let's start our journey to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. Introduction. We will introduce you to the concept of the DCAP, that is the decoupling capacitor. Next, we will talk about the reason why the proper decoupling is necessary in a circuit. Next, we will talk about intrinsic and extrinsic decaps. Next, we will talk about the different positionings of decaps in a chip, that means the entire chip from the silicon up to its packaging. Next, we will talk about the on chip decoupling capacitor that is used in your VLSI design. Next, we will talk about the decaps and the physical design process. That means where we use the decaps in the physical design. Next, we will talk about the decaps that are used in FPGA designs. Next, we will show you the simple architecture of a decap using a NMOS capacitor. So that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction A decoupling capacitor that is DCAP is a capacitor that is used to decouple one part of an electrical network the circuit from another. So basically, we are making a electrical isolation between the two parts of an electric circuit. Both off-chip and on-chip decaps are used in VLSI. We will restrict our focus on the on-chip decaps in today's discussion. However, we will cover different type of decaps to a diagram in a later slide. As per our circuit theory, including the KCL and KVL, that is the Kirchhoff laws, if the voltage level of a device is fixed, the changing power demands are manifested as changing in the current. This is true for a one single element and this is true for a sea of elements that is connected in a VLSI circuit. When the current draw in a device changes, the power supply responds to that with the transient change or it is called a transient response of a circuit. That means it is not instantaneous. It takes some time and follow some graph for the change based on what type of circuit element are there. Such noise caused by the circuit elements is generally hunted to the ECAP. So DCAP acts as a shunt, thus reducing the effect of the noise to the rest of the circuit. These decaps have to be manufactured into the chip and their placement has to be decided at the design time. Hence, we are having this episode that in the design, the ASIC design or the FPGA design, when the decaps are useful and where at what design stage we are inserting them and where. So, we are complete with the introduction. Let's move on to the next slide. Why a proper decoupling is necessary in a circuit? Generally, here we are talking about a silicon chip. However, in a circuit perspective, let us understand why a decoupling is here necessary. For high performance, that is the high frequency digital ICs such as ASICs and FPGAs, the allowable tolerance for the supply is typically 5%. That means the VDD and VSS, if we allow the change, it should be there within 5% only. This includes the sum of the DC error, ripple and noise. So from your class book text, you know about the DC error and the ripple and noise is something that you come across in the VLSI only. The noise is something you might be familiar with the crosstalk noise that means one line is carrying the current another line is getting induced by the noise and sometimes the circuit if it is used in some maybe in the space application there will be cosmic noises so generally the noise can come from anywhere that is within the circuit or from external sources altogether it can impact the circuit performance the digital device will meet specification if this voltage remains within the tolerance. That means 5% we have talked about. The tolerance will decide whether the digital operation that is 1 or 0 operation is proper of the digital circuit or the sub circuit or the sub chip whatever we are analyzing. So it is necessary to keep high frequency noise from entering into the chip in the first place. For this reason, we have various type of decaps. In this slide, I will show you all the type. However, we will restrict our discussion today the on-chip decaps that is which are used in the VLSI design, specifically in the ASICs and the FPGAs. 
This is generally done with a combination of electrolytic capacitor for low frequency decoupling, ceramic capacitor for high frequency decoupling and possibly using ferrites. Now here this point we just discussed is for the entire set of decap, not for the on chip that is the silicon decaps. At the end of the slide that means the last slide we have the silicon decap. We will show how the structure is there and you will understand the basic structure of a NMOS decap. All the decoupling capacitors must connect directly to a low impedance ground plane in order to be effective. That means it should act as a shunt and it should pass the noise to the ground. That's how it prevents the tolerance to jump off the upper or lower ceiling. That means the plus or minus 5 parts. So here we are done talking about the reason where a proper decoupling is necessary for a circuit. Circuit means entire chip, not only the silicon wafer, but the entire chip or maybe the entire circuit that is being used in a particular device this kind of decouplings will be there so here we are done with this slide let's move on to the next slide here we will talk about intrinsic and extrinsic decaps so intrinsic and extrinsic you will come to know the meaning these are not the internal and external decaps these are not those so you will understand the meaning as we proceed through this slide Capacitor between the power and the ground networks are referred to as the decaps or decoupling capacitors. That means they decouple the power and the ground and hunts the noise. There are two types of decoupling capacitor found in a power delivery network, PDN. Intrinsic decap, parasitic capacitance between the metal interconnect of the supply lines, device capacitance and the capacitance between the substrate and the end well are intrinsic decap. So these decaps are there while the chip is getting manufactured. That means we have not put extra decaps that in the design decaps, these are intrinsic decap. The intrinsic decoupling capacitance is not efficient to constrain the voltage drop within the prescribed safe limits. That means we have talked about 5% plus minus 5%. These intrinsic decaps which are getting created during the fabrication are not sufficient to maintain the limit. So designers have to add explicit decaps on the die at supply points. This is here our design decaps enters into the picture. Extrinsic decap. The explicit decap that are added and occupy more area and consume more power in a chip. So this is the extrinsic decap. We will talk about this today. And this is as a designer you have to place to minimize the noise in the circuit. We are done here with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Positioning of the decaps in a chip. Here in this slide, we will talk about the entire chip, including the chip packaging, where all the decaps are there. So these are not all the standard cell design decaps. These are some other decaps also. This just to clear your overview and give a bird's eye view to the family of decaps that we generally have in a chip. So here goes our VDD line, that is the power line. And here goes our VSS line, that is the ground line. And here we have multiple components in the chip that are the motherboard, the socket, the package, P4 and die. So where and where all those decaps are there in the entire chip assembly, these are our bulk decaps. Next we have the motherboard decaps. Next we have the package decaps. Next we have the on die decaps. So these are the entire set of decaps that are in a cheap assembly. You don't have to be in a headache about all this type of decaps. You have to just focus today's discussion is on the silicon decaps that you use during your VLSI design. Maybe in the front end or maybe in the back end wherever it is applicable. So here we are done with this slide. Let's move on to the next slide on chip decoupling capacitor. So now we are zooming into our focus of the decoupling capacitors that are used in a VLSI design. Simplest form of decaps are generally the NMOS transistors. We build our decaps using the NMOS structure. The top plate is polysilicon, the bottom plate is inverted channel, insulator and the gate apps. Insulator is the gate oxide. To make the decap, you connect poly to the VDD and source drain to the VSS. Later, we will show the diagram in some other slide. Generally, standard cell libraries contain these necessary decap cells. These are pre-designed and available in your standard cell library. You have to pick and use during your design. And in case you are a standard cell designer, we have a later slide where we show the structure of this kind of decaps. 
Adding decoupling capacitors, that is decap, between the power network and the ground network is effective and widely adopted approach to reduce the power network impedance and therefore reduce the power network noise. So, this is about the noise cleaning inside the silicon. The on-chip decoupling capacitor, their positioning during the VLSI design is all about reducing the noise that are created or coming into the chip in the entire set of the silicon that means we are not talking about only the silicon the silicon that is the FUL layer MEOL layer and BOL layer in case you do not know about the three layers we have a video on FUL BOL and MEOL and the link is given in the description below so go ahead and watch that so you will understand what I am talking about. we are done here talking about the on-chip decoupling capacitor and let's move on to the next slide decaps and physical design optimization with decaps has two stages the first stage is pre-place decaps before placing the standard cells. First, we have some decaps which we place in the design before even we place our standard cells. The second stage is a post-placement refinement to the existing floor plan in an incremental manner. And what is about this? In the post-placement refinement, decap placement is done to meet both the IR drop, also the power related timing target. The decaps are also effective in IR drop violations because already we have talked about the IR drop and the ground bounce in two different episodes. The link is provided in the description below. In case you do not have the knowledge of them, please go ahead and watch the two episodes. So here the post-placement things which is done during the physical verification, especially in the IR drop stage, there we place the necessary decaps. Next is when decaps placed far away from the noisy nodes, it leads to insufficient noise reduction. That means the noisy nodes have to be identified and that is identified through various process like eye drop analysis and other physical verification processes. An optimal placement of the decap has to be done in the standard cell based ASIC design for proper noise reduction. This is a tough job obviously. However, the physical design engineer takes care of this. These are the challenges. Before you tape out your chip, you have to be over sanguine that proper decoupling has been done so that the noises are rounded. So here talking is done about the decaps and the physical design. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, FPGAs and decaps. We have talked about the ASIC design where we use the standard cells. Now the question is the FPGA, how we deal with the decaps there. FPGAs have current consumption profile which is unknown at the design time. So FPGA is like that. We have a comparative episode on the FPGAs versus the ASIC design that is our SOC design. So there you can go ahead and watch that episode in case you do not know the differences between the FPGA and the ASIC. You will clear your fundamentals there. The, the link of the video is given in the description. The mapped designs decides the current consumption profile of the chip at the configuration time. This is something we talk do in the FPGA. That means during the configuration time, we decide a lot of things. Hence, a large number of on-chip decaps are necessary to achieve robust power grid design in FPGA, catering to different designs mapped onto it. Because the FPGA is ready, then we implement the design onto it. Consequently, there will be more unused on-chip decaps in the part of the FPGA where a design is not mapped. Next, these unused decaps have leakage overheads associated with them and the leakage power for the decap is expected to rise exponentially with the reduction of the oxide. Now here you see the differences of the decaps between the ASIC which we have discussed in previous slide and the FPGAs in this current slide. And you see there are some place decaps are there, ready decaps are there and we have their benefits and we have their cons also. That means the pros and cons both that we have just discussed. So let's move on to the next slide. Decoupling capacitor using NMOS. This slide is for the standard cell designers who want to have a look what is there inside a standard cell decap, the basic structure. However, nowadays the companies may make an advanced structure based on the technology downscaling, and those designs are proprietary to the company in which you are working. So, those you will only see there, not here. This is here where you will get a general concept, the basic building block, and let us see what is the structure of a decap. A standard cell decap is usually made from the NMOS transistor in a CMOS process. And here is our structure. 
the gate of the NMOS transistor is connected to VDD. So you can see this is our NMOS transistor and this is our gate and this is connected to VDD. Generally, this is poly, right? The poly is connected to VDD. The source and the drain and the substrate of the transistor are tied to VSS. So here you can see it is source, it is drain and here the substrate is there. All of them are tied together and that is connected to the VSS. This approach is considered effective because the thin oxide capacitance of the transistor gate provides a higher capacitance than any other oxide capacitance available in a standard CMOS fabric. So here we take advantage of the gate oxide as the dielectric of the capacitor of the decap. So you can view this is as a capacitor and this is getting placed right this acts as a capacitor and that is getting placed at different places as per your physical design need that means whatever need is coming from the physical verification process one we have talked about is the ir drop and there might be some other things maybe timings or maybe crosstalk noise analysis many things could be there so from whatever analysis the physical design analysis you are getting the need of a decap you place the decap there and as a standard cell designer you can have this basic structure designed as per your your technology node so the gate oxide here will be as per your technology node the length of the channel will be for as the technology node everything will be as per your technology node even if you have a sy technology so there will be some changes here okay in the structure that is there that you can explore once you are inside in a company where you are designing a standard cell or you can use the standard cell as a asic designer in your physical design process that time you will have some knowledge from the standard cell data sheet of the decaps and there you can have the clear idea so we have a couple of episodes on the standard cell and their structure and we have talked about a free pdk where you can go ahead and see the data sheets how are there so all the links are provided in the video description so here we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like share and subscribe in case you have some dislike put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today